So I'm a marine geochemist and paleo-oceanographer. And what that means basically is that I use chemical methods to decipher the history of the oceans by studying ocean sediments. I work at the Institute for Marine and Antarctic Studies at the University of Tasmania. Actually, chemistry was one of my least favorite subjects in school. One thing I was passionate about was the environment and understanding how the environment works. And just gradually as I became more involved in that research, um, I came to see chemistry as, as a useful tool and actually now it's something I really enjoy. A couple months ago I was really pleased to receive um, a future fellowship from the Australian Research Council. Um, this is a competitive award that provides funding for me for the next four years and so my um, job as a paleoceanographer is to read the history of the oceans in the marine sediments. The research that I'm just about to start is looking at how um, oxygen in the ocean responded to the last major climate transition that happened on Earth, which was about 20,000 years ago. Uh, that was the last ice age. Recent studies have shown that over the past 50 years, so over you know human lifespan, um, there have been quite large decreases in oxygen in the ocean, and it's um, something that's called ocean deoxygenation. And the biggest changes have been found in the Southern Ocean. But the Southern Ocean is important in controlling the oxygen levels in the rest of the ocean. It sort of acts as the ocean's lungs. That's where oxygen gets into the ocean. And then ocean currents transport the oxygen to the rest of the ocean. There's certain parts of the ocean where oxygen levels are naturally very low. And these are mostly in the tropics. And they're called oxygen minimum zones. The concern with decreasing oxygen levels in the ocean is that these oxygen minimum zones might expand and become more prevalent. The thing about the oxygen minimum zones um, is that they have sort of unique biogeochemistry that happens in them when oxygen is low. And one of the things that might happen when oxygen levels decrease is that we might get more emissions of greenhouse gases from the ocean into the atmosphere, such as nitrous oxide is a really powerful greenhouse gas. And so that would essentially amplify climate change. The way that I'm going to be doing this research is by analyzing the chemical composition of marine sediment cores. And I look at a suite of trace metals um, in the sediments. I also have an exciting opportunity in 2014 to go out on the new CSIRO research vessel, the Investigator. Um, it'll be its first year of operation and we're going to go south of Tasmania into the Southern Ocean and collect some, some new sediment cores. Well, because ocean deoxygenation might impact marine ecosystems and accelerate climate change, there's an interest in trying to predict how oxygen will change into the future, and that's done by using climate models. And so my upcoming research is going to be useful in refining those climate models because um, you can use the observations that I generate of how oxygen has changed in the past to improve the climate models and their ability to predict how oxygen will change into the future.